Building hillsides might just be a little bit more messy than you imagine. Hi, welcome back to Chadwick Model Railway. I'm Charlie. And in this video, we're going to look at finishing off a bit more landscape in this area here. So, what are we trying to achieve? Now, put quite crudely, what I'm trying to do is to come from this road that runs down out of the railway station and across this small river and then kind of up over this hillside to join in the area on the tip of the branch line station. Now if I was to throw a couple of bits in place like a kind of a tatty old bridge and a piece of timber that's the kind of effect that I'm trying to achieve. So we come off this road here across this small river um, I'm going to insert here a small curve section because part of the road will actually come around into this area here but a road needs to travel up up this hillside and then somehow bridge across this part of the hillside and then across um, into the branch line station. Now in the last video I did mention the fact that I'm kind of leaning towards the fact that the land was here before the railway so the railway then took out this piece of um, countryside there because they wouldn't tunnel it because you know tunneling is extremely expensive so they've we've cut out that section there which needs a small bridge across and then similarly the way this hillside would have all come down here originally um, we now need to um, what we say sort of manufacture um, man's footprint man's involvement um, on this hillside to get the railway in place so there's lots of things to be done um, and of course there's more sellotex more cutting um, uh, what do you call it? plaster cloth sculptor mold all this sort of stuff to try to get some kind of realistic landform in place now as you can see i just removed the freight yard which i think i mistakenly called the branch line station earlier um, but i wanted to show you what's the progress i've made um, on the retaining wall um, i've glued them together and what i'd used was I just put a small piece of timber on the back and glued it on. Now, I always get asked about glues, and it's a fair question, because to go from foam board to um, timber, what I've used is something called Sticks Like from Evo Stick. This is um, a very good sticky kind of glue. Um, it's, a, it's a bonding agent. But the thing to remember, it has a solvent inside, right? Now, the reason I mentioned the solvent is because whilst at the Worley show last week, I came across these retaining walls. Oh, sorry, my brick panel, really, isn't it? Um, and these were supplied by, bear with me, Sherwood Models. And I shall leave all the, all the details about these in the description. And for a panel this side, it's £7.99. So I bought a few of these. And my idea is to use this as the top section um, for the re for across here for the retaining wall. Um, it also might be useful to use as a tunnel liner because obviously it's, as you can see it's it's very flexible. This is quite nice stuff um, and it also you know bends this sort of way. Yeah, good. But as I said um, you need to use a solvent free um, sort of glue if you like. Um, so this is another one from Evo Stick and it's called Grip Fill. So this is what I shall be using. Um, now, I put these verticals in just with Gorilla Glue um, and as you can see the old retaining wall sort of fits in reasonably well now and all I need do is using the sticks like and if I clamp these into place if you can sort of get the general gist of it and then I shall glue this foam board against these wooden uprights and that'll be in to stay. Um, takes a bit of nurturing, but the glue will hold it in. I mean, it really is a decent, powerful glue. And then, as I sort of intimated, I shall use this stuff here to give the final um, sort of few inches or few feet in reality on the top. I do need to come up with a coping stone to go between the two. But now I've got this in place, it sort of helps me to sort of visualize the hillside over uh, uh, on that end. So just in summary then I use Gorilla Glue for the wood glue, Gorilla Glue as it were, um, to bond the timber sections to the baseboard. Um, for this new board I'll be using Evo Stick Grip Fill 
and the, my other sort of go-to glue is sticks like um, you can use other things like um, cellar t uh, not, uh, bathroom sealant and all the rest of it for sort of just gash pieces of sellotex and that sort of thing but if you want to go and buy the very sort of best which won't let go then you do need to go and buy proprietary stuff but keep the non keep the glues contain solvent away from this stuff here or so the guys at Sherwood Models told me right so I think I shall glue this in place first and then we'll crack on with the feel of getting the feel of how this hillside's going to shape up now I must admit I have made this a little bit more awkward for myself because I'm just trying to glue on the wrong side of it if you see what I mean. So if I put some sticks light on each of the top sections of these timbers and then with the usual type of modelling clamps clamp it into place. Of course, you only get one shot with these, don't you? Because the last thing you want to do is glue it and clamp it in the wrong place. So we should go right down here, right up to the tunnel entrance, and then using these little clamps, clamp it up. And I'm sure in next to no time, this will be as solid as a rock. And then once these have all dried, um, I'll put another little bit of sticks like um, over here to pull these sections back against the, the board. But in the meantime, what I will do is I'm just going to run a, a coach to make sure that we have the right amount of clearance between the boards and the tracks. And with my Mark III coaches, yes, we do have adequate clearance around this curve. Now, while I'm waiting for this uh, glue to cure, it's worth mentioning that down here on the, uh, where the tunnel entrance is, that during the week I did ballast the first uh, 12 inches or sort of 30 centimetres um, of track going into the tunnel um, purely from a filming point of view so that when my trains come out of this tunnel um, you'll be able to see that it has been ballasted and similarly I've painted the sides of the Celotex black um, to absorb any stray light. Clearly I needed to get these jobs finished before I can then build the landscape on top of this tunnel. And I've also got to sort out a short tunnel liner. Now, while we're waiting for this glue to dry, I thought I'd ask you to subscribe. And why is that? Because I want to try and see if actually an old age pensioner can have 100,000 subscribers. So you know what to do, hit the subscribe button and give us a chance. Now, as you can imagine, cutting up the hillside is no big deal. What do you need? You need Celotex, you need a knife. Um, and in this case, I'm using my old digital level. And there should be a link for these in the Show More tab because I'm thinking of using the Weissman car system. I mean, there's no promises. You know, I might just have an ordinary road. But I wanted it to be not too steep for that car system to manage it. <laughs> However, I'm working roughly here on about 7%. But the Weissman car system can actually go up to 35%, which is kind of up here. I mean, it's an absolutely enormous figure. But that's where I'm kind of working on. So you never know, I might have working vehicles in the future. Anyway, um, I'm kind of getting there. I've cut a few more blocks out. So what I need to do is, is glue these into place, do some more mad cutting, hopefully, um, without uh, putting myself at risk and trying to get the right pattern up here. And then I've got to think about the retaining walls to go in here. So I should just glue these blocks in and then shave them off. As you can see, I've just added another block on top. And then when I bring in my sort of level, you can see that I need to cut that one down a few centimetres. No problem. Well, when I said no problem, <laughs> it was yesterday. Now, as you can see, it's a complete and utter tip. Um, I've had the 
um, Sellotex glued in place overnight. So this is all kind of solid and I've had a hack at it with my usual weapons of warfare. Down at the cutting, I've built up the retaining wall side, obviously on the inside of the cutting, and also tried to landscape the outside as the land would fall away. So I'm still trying to keep in mind the shape of the land before the railway arrived. Now, unsurprisingly, a few more hours have passed by, and hopefully you can see that I've constructed this latest little section to pop in here. And uh, so what I need to do now is glue the, the arches to this piece of foam board and again glue the two foam boards together um, and that should complete this run. The next thing I need to do after that is to cut some of this foam board away and allow the land to flow down because this section here on the branch line station is going to be higher than uh, the retaining wall and then which is now higher than the hillside so then we get this feeling of it dropping away. Now while we're waiting for this stuff to dry I thought I'd switch focus now on our tunnel mouth because inside it will naturally need a tunnel liner so when we look into the tunnel we don't see sort of bits of timber and sellotex. So what's about? Well I did a bit of googling and Woodland Scenics make this strange little contraption um, and it's a mould for making tunnel liners and that you have to make them in two goes so that's the first half and then you make another to clip across well not clip but to bond across so all you do is you put your plaster into the mold um, give it a day or two to go off and then slowly take it out um, and kind of there you are so you need um, at least two of these and perhaps four depending on your view into the tunnel however this is only cheap and cheerful I think these are eight pounds something each but they are cracking. I mean, this is a bit of a, a one-shot item, really. You know, you probably get two out of it, but I can just see this thing sort of cracking and falling apart because when you go to take the um, the 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 liner itself out of the mould, the mould tends to flex, and this is a very brittle substance. So, not quite the uh, ideal solution. So, where do we go from there? Well. We go back to our good old bit of card kit. So um, what I've decided to use is this one here. And this is dressed stone from Metcalf M0052. And what is it? Uh, five pound a pop, or it was when I bought it. And uh, it contains, sorry, five pounds 80, and it contains eight sheets of thick card printed with blah de blah. Right. So what have I got? So here's the piece of card that I'm going to use and I've trimmed the white edging off and also I've trimmed the end and fanned it out if you can see what I mean. So I've, I've cut small cuts all the way along, fanned it back so my intention then is to glue it to the face of the tunnel mouth by these little tabs. Now the back of this particular tunnel mouth is very shiny. I don't know if you can see that. It's very smooth. So what I thought I would do is just roughen it up a little bit with some glass paper to make sure that the hot glue gets a good bond. And that should do it. Right. Um, sizing it up, this was a little bit too long so I've, there's a little bit of section I've cut away and now I think we're sort of good to go. Now I thought I'd got to do it in thirds or I'm not certainly not going to do it in one in one hit. So if I can put that kind of there where you can see it and then we'll crack on. Right so hot glue going in. Now when you use a hot glue gun <laughs> it is so easy to burn yourself. It really is. I've done it numerous times and I'm sure I'll do it again. Right, so pop this on top of the hot glue, hold it in position for a few seconds and hopefully, ouch, hopefully, ouch, it should take and then you can see there perhaps how it's kind of going and uh, yeah there we have it. Right. So moving around to the other side, let's try and do the rest of it in one 
go. So in with a hot glue. Oops, oops, spilt a bit there. And then slowly turn this into place. Not quite right on the top there. Sorry, you can't see this bit. I can't have a shot. Just trying to move it around just until it sets. And hopefully, there we have it. Just pulling off the little bits of glue that have spilled out whilst they're still in sort of liquid form. Right. Well, hopefully you agree that's not such a bad job. So when you look into the tunnel, you see the brickwork rather than a great big load of Celotex. And similarly, as my trains come out of the tunnel, you see the liner rather than the Celotex. Right, that seemed to go reasonably well. Um, it's a little bit long here, so obviously I, I need to uh, take another little bit of brickwork off and then we'll pop it into place and uh, see what it looks like. And now back to the retaining wall again with the hot glue gun. Now these are, the other glue is starting to go off. I can get that in position. And get it clamped. Funny thing with clamps in it, you just can't get enough of them. Just for a change, it's the following day, and it's time to take stock of actually where we are. Now, I've reinstalled the two boards for the branch line station, and laid across it is the track plan. Over here on the hillside, I've taken a great deal of material off the top of this slab. And also, using a scalpel, I've reduced the height of this foam board uh, to allow a smooth transition from um, across the hillsides up into the freight yard. Um, now, now that some, that is somewhat lower, I can see that this is still too high, as we've got a little rock here. So there's still some material to come off of this. Now I mentioned earlier about the Weissman car system that I might have an automated road running up here. And I got my units the wrong way around. I said that I think I said I had 7%. Well I didn't, sorry, 7 degrees. Well I didn't, I think I had 7 degrees, which is actually, and I'll put this on here, it's 11.4%. However, the astounding thing about the Weissman car system that allegedly it can climb up to 38 percent. Now if I raise this up to 38 percent, if I can get hold of the wretched thing, so 38 percent is an enormously steep climb. I just find that quite incredible. So my sort of 10-12 percent climb should be no problem at all. I mentioned about these digital um, levels, they are brilliant, it's in the show more tabs if you fancy one. Right, so what have I got to do? Well, I've got some material to take off this lump here so that I get a smooth transition. And this is where you come in. Um, I need to sort out um, two bridges to cross this one and across from here, going into this area here of the uh, freight yard. So that way I have traffic coming up here, cross a bridge, cross another bridge and into the freight yard and hopefully keep it automated up into this area here. And now clearly automation is something that I need to consider at this stage rather than to try to make a, a botch of it later on. Now over in the cutting which goes down to the tunnel, I've extended the bank across to the end of this goods shed. However, that seems to have its own drawbacks. 
because this shed actually sort of spoils the view of any trains going to or from the tunnel. So what I may well consider is to redefine these sidings, um, perhaps for um, unserviceable, long-term unserviceable rolling stock. And you can see just peering over the top of that small embankment to Mark III coaches, so we will have visibility of the trains going to and fro. Now moving on to another transition, we need to get from this hillside down to this level here where the fuel depot goes and from here to this level here where a bit of maintenance facility. Now I think what I'm going to do is rather than cover the whole thing in retaining walls, um, to make a change what I'm going to endeavour to use is the old um, plaster moulds from Woodland Scenics. Now I, I do own quite a few of these so I can make up some um, rock formations, cut this area back um, and, ma and make a transition then from the grass into the rock formation whereas on this wall here we will have the, um, the, the cutting wall as it were. So lots of things to happen in this area. Now I mentioned earlier about using these wall panels um, but for, at £7.99 they're not exactly cheap but I must confess I do like them. Anyway to that end the side that you can't, currently can't see of this cutting I use one of these panels sized it up cut them to the to the right size to keep the um, the mortar lines horizontal and I've popped them in and they are just going to go in there with uh, double-sided sticky tape to push them against the Celotex and then we can have a look at them in close-up with a train driving through. I'm not quite happy with the way they look because I need to sort of bring out more of the render um, side of them and these are the offcuts from that little uh, strip, those strips there and obviously I can do some more to sort of testing on these little offcuts before committing to the larger sheets. I have quite a few to use around that, uh, that hillside area um, but I mean these are quite expensive at £7.99 but like I say they are good um, but um, I don't really want to cover the whole thing in this type of in this type of wall and have a decent go and uh, see exactly how versatile they are. Now this seems an ideal opportunity to run my original class 25 which was £85 when, with a lock sound version 3.5 chip in it many many years ago and my track cam so we'll run these two both up and down and use another camera to see what it looks like so we can get the feel of what this cutting looks like and how deep it really is. Um, and it, obviously it's not tarted up there's no ballast no nothing so it's quite embryonic but let's have a look and see what it sort of feels like. So here's the shot with just the little small Sony camera and now we switch to the track cam and reconfiguring them, we send them around again in the other direction. You can clearly see the advantage of ballasting that tunnel section prior to its installation of the tunnel and the tunnel lining. But it does seem a bit strange when you go into the helix and of course there's, there's gaps everywhere and you can see the rest of the room so it kind of um, destroys the, the moment. But 
as far as the videos are concerned in the future. Of course, you'll just see the, the loco and its train coming through the tunnel mouth. So uh, I think it's pretty good to go. But what do you think? And that's what the comments section's for. Well, perhaps I didn't quite make as much progress as I would have hoped, but we are where we are with these things. Um, what I would like to do is ask my patients and subscribers for some help. And that is, if you are a user of Fala or uh, Weissman road systems, where you have the, um, the magnetic wire running through your layout, you know, through your road traffic and stuff, um, and you can have, offer me any advice, you know, pointers on which way to go with this, it would be very much appreciated. I do need to know um, how sharply they will turn, i.e. around a roundabout, will they go around a, a six inch or a 15 centimeter roundabout? That kind of information would be very useful because over in that area there, I'm looking at putting in a perhaps a small uh, sort of habitation area, perhaps a couple of shops, a couple of uh, houses and that sort of thing. Moving on from there, just one for your diary. Um, the West Camel Model Railway Society holds its usual Christmas uh, exhibition on the 30th of December. That's West Camel uh, near Yeovil. It's, it'll be in the press and I will put another reminder out about that one. But if you live in the Southwest, then please feel free to come along. Well, I hope you found this video interesting. And as usual, I would like to thank the patrons who make it all possible. And of course, if you're not a subscriber, please hit the button. Subscribing is free. And there's a couple of tongue in cheek videos this time. And there's one there and the other one there. I'll see you in two weeks time. Thanks a lot. Take care. Bye bye.